Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is another update about my baby. I, I, we're not even gonna do the update yet. I'm gonna do the bump date first because I already know people wanna see the bump. So let's do a bump update, shall we? This is the 17, 16, 17 week bump. So we're about four months in, five months to go. Say hi. Say hello. I will be 17 weeks on Monday. Today is Thursday. I haven't given an update since nine weeks, which was way before I told anybody. We hadn't told my family. We hadn't told my parents yet. We did do our announcement at Fashion Week, if you didn't know. Everybody was shook, basically, which was the goal. I didn't want to do like a regular out in the trees and oh, I love my new baby. And uh -uh. None of the sentimental stuff. Y'all gonna get this fire fit. And it's my first time in Fashion Week, so I'm about to give you all the slay okay just give you all the slay and while i'm slaying i'm also going to show the bump that was the vibe that i was going for so it was a very last minute plan but it was a good plan nonetheless i thought it would be a good pr stunt for me so <laughs> coming back to instagram after being gone for a little while going to fashion week after i've never been joining a new agency while also announcing a pregnancy it just seemed like a good time. You probably have seen that I am having another Amazon The Drop collection come out. So it's just a lot of great things happening. Just wanted to make sure y'all was up to date. I am currently in my second trimester. So let's get through the end of the first trimester and then I'll go into my second trimester uh, update. Left you guys off at week nine. Week 10, week 10 was when my sense of smell was extremely strong. Not only was my sense of smell heightened to where certain things burn my nose. A lot of you guys were asking, okay, if you don't burn candles, like what do you do? What's a holistic approach? Um, I have a very high tech Bluetooth aroma diffuser. It's called Aromatech. It's the type of diffuser that a hotel would use, like a HVAC, but smaller. They have the HVACs in hotels, but I have the smaller, just Bluetooth one that stands up. It's about that tall, but it just diffuses the oil without water so that you don't have to keep refilling it with water. And it just diffuses the oil aroma into your home and it smells so good. They have so many different types of scents. It is a more expensive version of a water diffuser where you just put drops of essential oil in it and it uses it that way. But I feel like the um, oil aroma diffusers that just use oil and no water, those have a very strong scent. Well, the flip side to that is that it's a very strong scent. It does leave my house smelling really, really strong, which it's been too strong for me. I've had to turn it down in some sense I don't like, so I had to change the scent in it. Um, I believe I'm going to just go ahead and get rid of the scent that I have in there. Now I have fresh air in there and it doesn't smell like fresh air. It smells like you walked into an Abercrombie. It smells like Hollister, the dark cave. Thinking I'm gonna switch to Santal because Santal has been the one thing I can actually stand. A lot of Cam's colognes I don't like. To this day, I still don't like it. started at week 10, but it has not stopped. My sense of smell is still really heightened. The house always smells like feet to me. I actually cut it out of a vlog that I uploaded a couple weeks ago because I figured people would be like, why is her sense of smell heightened? But we were talking about it because I was spraying perfume <laughs> in the house. I was literally shaking baking soda on the stairs to get rid of any odors. Um, I'm glad that we got rid of the carpet down here because I'm pretty sure I would have hated the smell of this carpet. Nevertheless, everything smells like feet. So this house in, in its entirety just pisses me off because it always smells like feet to me unless there's an aroma scent going. And if that's going, that's too strong and it burns my nose. I don't like the smell of my own body, so that's not fun. The first trimester, I didn't like the smell of my skin. Skin, per se. Cam noticed that he said the first trimester um, from like week 10 to even before we knew he said I smelled not like metal like not like pennies but he said I had like a metallic kind of smell. It was a different smell and he kind of liked it um, and I was like okay I, I couldn't smell it but I definitely didn't like the smell of my body. It wasn't something I was used to. The scent of my Virginia smells different also. It's not a bad smell it's just weird. I also can't smell Cam's body odor, which kind of frustrates me because normally I can smell his, um, not his body odor, oh my God. That sounds like I smell his crotch and his armpits. He's never musty. Cam is never musty. If you've ever met Cam, you will probably never smell him musty. But he has a particular scent. His skin has a particular scent that I'm used to and I can't smell that either. And I think it's pheromones also, like I can't smell the pheromones, which kind of leads into my next point. Between week, week seven, and the rest of my first trimester, I had 
zero sex drive, which is so sad to me because if we're being quite honest, this might be TMI, but before pregnancy, I was a sex kitten, okay? <laughs> I was ready to get down and dirty at any time. Like I would wake up ready, I would go to bed ready. I mean, there were very few times where I would just like be like, please don't touch me. And that would usually be around the time where I'm getting my period and I just don't feel cute. But even then, I mean, we got the Nixit boo, so I'm not turning down. I'm not saying no. But even when I was like not in the mood, not feeling it, I still could like work a way around it. You know what I mean? Um, or at least come back the next day and be like, sorry, I kind of rejected you. Let's let's get let's get down. Oh, that first trimester was rough. And it's not that I didn't like his personality or him in general. I just didn't like being touched. I didn't like, I just wasn't in the mood. Um, he's very considerate and consensual, so he's not going to force me to do anything. Um, so yes, the last few weeks may have been rough on him. I'm so sorry, babe. But now that I'm in my second trimester, it's getting a little better. I'll get to that later. His colognes that I normally like, I wasn't feeling. Like I said, the only thing that I've really liked on him is Santal by Le Labo. So I'm thinking Santal is just gonna have to be my scent. There are certain scents that I wear normally that I don't like, which is weird. Um, so the scent thing just threw me all the way off. Um, I could smell Gigi, like I could smell everything from her licking herself. Normally I can, I can smell it if she's close, but like if she could be like across the room and I could smell her licking herself and all that stuff. I hated it, I couldn't stand to be around her. Still kind of can't, she still irritates me. Week 10, I was still very hungry. Um, but also nauseous and the nausea would sometimes subside as long as I ate enough. I noticed, I started noticing there was a bad taste in my mouth. My taste wasn't metally, it was more so like a sour taste, like almost like a about to throw up taste, like the taste you get in your mouth when you're about to throw up. That's kind of what I was tasting. It was like overproduction of saliva and just sour. So because of that, I had to keep chewing gum. Kind of distracted me from both the taste in my mouth and the smells that I didn't like if I chewed gum. So I just was chewing a lot of gum or getting Listerine strips and just using those. Brushing my teeth a lot. I was brushing my teeth a lot just to make sure I didn't have any lingering taste in my mouth after I ate stuff. When I was in Texas to visit my family to tell them, um, I ate a lot and I was noticing certain things were making me gassy. Like if I ate a lot of fried food, obviously, um, you know, processed food would probably make me a little more gassy, but I also noticed that healthy food wasn't helping either. To be quite honest, if I ate a salad, it would not make me feel good. So I just tried to eat whatever my body was telling me to eat and then hope for the best. The bloating and the gas was horrible. I don't even think I had a baby bump at that point. It was just, I was fat. Bloat and gas combined with the fact that my organs were moving up um, cause I felt like my stomach is like way up here now instead of being way down here. So I was waking up to pee twice a night. So I was usually waking up to pee around like 1 a.m. and 4 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. before I get up at 6 a.m. and then have to pee again. So I was peeing a lot throughout the night. Um, still sweating a lot, still very hot. Also week 10, I started noticing that that initial irritation that I was feeling earlier, like around week five, six, um, started just turning into low tolerance for anything. So I was generally in an okay mood until you say something or do something that irritated me. And then I was irritated. And when I was irritated, I wasn't just irritated. I was like, please don't buck because if I knuck, we gonna have a problem. I was coming in the club shaking my dreads. I'm normally not an angry person. Irritated, yes. You know, easily annoyed sometimes. This is different. This was another level of please don't talk to me or I'll fight you. And it wasn't necessarily like, I just didn't want to talk to people. It was like, if I knew somebody was gonna irritate me, I don't wanna to talk to them. If I knew somebody was gonna say something that might trigger me, I'm not gonna to talk to them. So I was kind of just like shutting the world out, which is why I wasn't on social media as much during the first trimester because I was trying to avoid any comments that would have pissed me off because I already knew they were gonna come. I just wasn't prepared mentally because I would have gone off on them. Week 11, I noticed that not only was I having a weird taste in my mouth just in general um, when I ate things, but it started getting worse with more citrusy things. For me, everything citrusy was making my mouth taste very sour and gross afterwards. So I had to steer clear of lemonade, orange juice, any type of fruit juice, no smoothies, no juices, period. Like I just tried to stay away from juice as much as possible. Typically like the super sweet ones were the ones, super sweet or super citrusy 
were the ones that were really throwing me off and I just did not like it. Still didn't like the smell of my body. I could smell my deodorant and I hated the smell of my deodorants, but I could not use any of that uh, natural stuff that ain't got no aluminum in it. Uh, my body odor, I don't like smelling myself. So if I can smell my pits, that's not good either. And with the aluminum free deodorants, mm, sometimes they just don't work. It was hard for me to find one that I liked to smell, that I liked the smell of. Um, so when I was at home, I was trying not to wear anything, but if I did go out, like if I had to go to church or something, which is really the only place I was going, because I was not going anywhere. But if I did go out, I was putting on, you know, aluminum deodorants to kind of help. And I didn't like the smell of those. I could smell the chemicals, hated it. So then I just start wearing Cam's Old Spice. Before week 11, my skin was immaculate. Around week 11, I noticed I started getting breakouts. Um, and it wasn't really like in any particular part of the face. It was more so just like, I would get little clusters of them. So I would get like, maybe three bumps in this area, or three bumps on this side, or three bumps on this side, three bumps on my chin. I was just getting different breakouts, um, which is not typical for me these days. Normally, I don't get breakouts like that anymore. I don't really get acne, so I noticed that that was like something that my body's changing, so I get it. I also noticed a little bit of hair growth. Most of y'all know that I had gotten um, laser hair removal on the majority of my body. <laughs> so I did notice that some of my hair was growing back around my lip. I did notice a little bit of growth on one side and then I've started to see more hairs pop up around my chin. I just got my underarms lasered this year though. So it really hasn't been that long since I started that area. I mean, it was done, I finished my package, but I probably needed to go back for a couple more touch-ups just to finish out that phase. Um, so I have noticed my underarm hair growing back, so I did shave it like a few days ago. My inner thighs, I've been noticing more hair growth. I haven't seen, and this is so great, I haven't seen a ton of hair growth around my bikini area and just the hair around my, my uh, clitoris, my vaginal area, like right in the labia area. That's where I noticed the hair, most hair growth. But as of like the top part and like my stomach, I haven't noticed a lot of hair growth on my stomach. Then around week 12 is where I noticed that my hormones started to calm down and uh, my symptoms started to subside, which was great because I was happy that a lot of the nausea wasn't as bad. Around week 12 was when I noticed that I could feel hunger again. I'm like, oh, I'm hungry. Around week 10, when we went to Texas, I was literally like, I had to eat a pre-breakfast, then a breakfast, then a snack, then lunch, then a snack, then dinner. Week 12, I slowed down to eating more of like three, four meals a day instead of eating five, six meals a day. I was having trouble eating after six or seven o'clock. Like I could not eat a full meal. Um, so if we ate that late, I just wouldn't eat or I would eat very, very little. I didn't like going to bed super full. I noticed that too. Um, if I was super full, I would lay down and my stomach would kind of fall to one side. So around week 12 is when I started considering getting a, um, pregnancy pillow because I felt like my stomach needed a lift or at least I needed to like shift my body into a more parallel position instead of like leaning into the bed because my bed is very like sink in if you have that feeling or if you feel like your stomach is kind of falling to the side I don't think it's too early to get a pregnancy pillow I just was having a hard time sleeping I had to keep sitting up to burp then laying back down. I noticed a little bit of tailbone pain if I were to like sit down for too long or sit down in the wrong position and not sit up straight, especially on this couch because I tend to lean back and put my feet up like this a lot while I'm watching TV and it's not the best position for my tailbone. Around week 13 um, is when I went to the doctor and got a blood test and urine sample, my first um, doctor's appointment. First of all, I had to find a whole new OBGYN because the one I used to go to, they didn't take self-pay. And if you're an entrepreneur, you know that uh, finding a healthcare plan as an entrepreneur is kind of feels like a scam. So I was trying to find a healthcare plan that I felt like worked for me and we hadn't found one yet. And so when I got pregnant, I was like, oh shoot, I do not have insurance. <laughs> trying to find somewhere to go was a struggle, but we finally found somewhere that does take self-pay. Um, it's not that close to me though. I don't like their facilities. I'm just gonna be honest. I don't like their facilities. They're not super up to date. Their technology is not that great. Um, the first ultrasound that I had was on a really old machine that was very hard to see the baby. We went back to the place that we went to to see the baby for the first time. They take you in really quickly. They take like 50 pictures, send you all the pictures. You pay like $10 for all the pictures. They gave me an update. They gave me a real update that my doctor didn't give me. Um, we got to see the baby move around and move its arms and legs. I mean, we just had a whole time. Um, and we just went for a wellness check and it was like 50 bucks. Whereas we went to the actual doctor and they showed me nothing. They were just like, oh, here's your baby. Here's the heartbeat. 
There's only one. Yay. What was the point in that? And we're paying how much for that? Crazy. So I'm not really sold so far on where I'm going. I'm not sure if I'm going to stay there. I would love to do more of a holistic approach to the birth. I haven't figured out exactly if I'm going to do that yet. By the time y'all watch this video, I should have figured it out. My actual insurance through my company that I had to set up um, will be set up by then as, as well. So I have more options of where I can go. The places that are close to me would only take certain types of insurance. So I had to get that type of insurance to be in order to go to those hospitals. But the hospitals around me are nice. I should be able to do a low risk birth, which means I can pretty much do all natural. I don't want to get induced. I don't want to have to do a C-section, all those things. Of course, obviously, if I have to, I will. If things go wrong, if there is some kind of complication, of course I have to do that. Um, so I do want the option of being close to a hospital to where I can get that stuff done if I need it. But I also want to try to do it my way. I'm also not super sold on doing a home birth. Don't really like the sound of it. I'd rather be in a facility or somewhere where I'm not at home. And so I'm still working on finding care for that and finding out what I'm gonna do, what my plan is. Um, but we're getting there. I had my first blood test and my urine sample. I looked over my blood work and everything. Everything looked really good. My HTG levels were really high, which was good. This is why I'm so happy that I did the holistic approach when I was taking my blood tests and stuff prior, because now I know how to read them. Um, so I can kind of see like, oh, I'm low in this, that means this. Most of the things that my blood is low in contribute to a lot of the cravings that I've been having. Like, um, I know for me, I crave oysters a lot, which Makes me so sad because I love oysters. And so I noticed on my blood test that I'm low in zinc and um, my vitamin D is low, things like that. And so when I crave oysters, I'm like, I know exactly what that is. I'm low in vitamin D, I'm low in zinc. Um, but I can't eat oysters raw. I can eat them cooked, can't eat them raw. But I like them raw, I like the juice. Week 14, my symptoms were pretty much mellowed out like i was feeling a lot better um no more extreme hunger or nausea at all like i could wake up and wait a couple hours before eating and not feel like i'm going to vomit much more energy i was talking a lot like i had a lot to say still very vocal still very sassy i noticed my sex drive slowly coming back i told cam one day i was like i feel like i like you again <laughs> not as much as i used to like i'm still not pouncing if he makes advances i don't push him away <laughs> so <laughs> just feeling more social in general when i planned to do new york fashion week i wasn't like cringing at the thought of it i actually was kind of excited to go because i felt like i needed some time to get to just be around people in general the only thing that i noticed that was different about my body during week 14 and i noticed like little bumps and it wasn't like anything crazy like it wasn't like acne or pimples that were like really big it was just like little it almost looked like a rash. So I started to put a bit more shea butter on that area. I was applying shea butter a couple times a day. Also applying grapeseed oil. Could just be my skin stretching out and turn it might turn into stretch marks or whatever. So to kind of alleviate that, I was applying a little bit more moisture than normal, which really helped. And I noticed the bumps went down in a couple days. And I'm still applying the shea butter. I did end up buying a pregnancy pillow. So that started to help me sleep a lot better um, just because my body was more aligned. I've seen the big the big pillows that's like a big old C and wraps on your body. I believe it's like one of the ones on Amazon that's like super, super popular. I decided against that one only because I didn't want it to be too big. We don't have a king size bed, we have a queen and I didn't want it to take up the entire bed. I also saw that the Freedom Mom one was a cooling one and it was made with like those beads um, on the inside. So I got that one because I needed something cooling and I needed something that wasn't gonna take up the whole bed. And I like that it's just one long pillow and I can twist it however I want to make the shape that I want so that when I switch sides, I don't have to like flip the whole pillow over. You know what I mean? So I love the Freedom Mom pillow. I got it from Amazon. I'll be sure to link it in my Amazon store if you guys wanna check it out um, because I really like that pillow. I think it's really working for me. The first night that I got it, Cam was like, all over it he's like oh i need one of these for me and i'm like give me my pillow um but i love it it feels like one of those neck pillows that you have for like the airport um but that has been helping me sleep a lot better my aversion to sweet citrusy things kind of went away and i started wanting smoothies almost immediately i don't know what happened it's just all of a sudden cam was gone and i was like i need a smoothie um i got one with berries and stuff in it because i wanted to like kind of steer clear of like any citrusy things and i was just, i guzzled that thing down so quick it was like the big old one too and i was just like 
slurp, slurp, slurp. Okay, so I love smoothies right now. Um, I have started drinking a bit more of citrus, so I had some lemonade the other day and it didn't make my mouth taste gross, so I, I liked that. I don't miss really anything that I can't have. I like coffee and I like the taste of coffee, but I don't really miss it as much. I think I can drink coffee though in moderation. I can also, I can have wine and champagne in moderation too. I just don't want it. Even though I did, you know, develop my barista and bartending skills, um, I just don't miss that at all. The only thing I miss is oysters and sushi. I miss sushi as well, but mostly oysters. I'm in week 16 now. I think my, my symptoms are the same. Um, not symptoms, but just what I've noticed. Everything is kind of the same. My stomach is getting a little bit bigger. I can't really fit my clothes. <laughs> Before fashion week when I was shopping, I was so frustrated because I can't fit any of my pants anymore. I also feel like I've gained a little bit of weight around my ribcage area because some of the tops that normally I could wear, like crop tops and things, I can't button them. So yeah, I'm definitely not an extra, extra small anymore. I'll tell you that. Um, the last two times that I've been to the doctor and they weighed me, I was 126 pounds. So during the first trimester, I gained about 15 pounds because I had lost weight before I got pregnant. Around the time of the Amazon drop, I was about 110, 111, I think. And so now I'm 126. So I gained about 15 pounds. Normally when I am at a healthy weight, I'm around 115. It's not terrible. I haven't gained any more weight since then. Both of my appointments, I was the same weight. So I don't think I've gained any weight other than the initial, like just carrying weight. I don't really feel bigger anywhere else, but my boobs and my stomach. Um, when I don't have a bra on, my boobs touch the top of my stomach and that feels so weird. My feet are a little, they're a little bit plump. A lot of my shoes, are very uncomfortable right now. My feet swell up easier. So I had to wear Cam's shoes home from New York because my Converse were not cutting it. I'm probably gonna have to just get some New Balance and Hoka's and just wear New Balance and Hoka's for the rest of this pregnancy. I need all of the arch support and I need my feet to be comfortable, okay? Probably get some more Ugg boots. In New York, I wore heels back to back and my feet were done. Uh, I was sitting down every chance I got because I was just like, whew, girl. I hadn't worn heels in so long, so it was just like, this is bad. One of the first things that I noticed, a lot of people said that my face gave it away, um, which is how they knew that I was pregnant because they're like, your face definitely gave it away because I was definitely looking more fuller in the face very early on. I think actually around week nine and 10 is where I noticed my face was filling out a lot. I definitely had like a glow about me before then, but then all of a sudden my face was not swollen. It's just, you could see my cheeks filling out. My nose filled out a little bit. It's not big. It's just not slender. <laughs> but every time my dad sees me, he's like, whoa, look at that face. And I'm just like, please, sir. You're making me feel like my face is fat. I know it's not fat. In person, my face looks normal to me, but like when I look on camera, like especially on my phone, this phone is doing me dirty because my face looks huge. I'm starting to get more DPN, which is basically like mommy moles. If you watch my um, Instagram, I did share that I got my DPN removed. Right here, it was like a cluster of them that I had removed um, in May. It's funny because I had that one removed and then all these other ones started popping up, but I was pregnant. So that's why that happened. Um, so ever since I got pregnant, like ever since like June, I've been noticing more popping up. Lately, it's been a lot of them on this side and like, I don't know if you guys can see, I'm gonna get close to the camera so you guys can see. They're small, but like some of them are weird. Some of them are staying, but some of them are more like loosey goosey to where I can like kind of twist them off. Um, but that's really only the area. I haven't really noticed more growth on my neck or anything, just mostly on this side of my face. Also, when I went to the doctor, um, they did tell me that I had a UTI, which I believe has cleared up because um, I haven't noticed any of the symptoms anymore. They did prescribe me antibiotics because I'm a holistic girl. I refused the antibiotics. So I started taking D-Manos. I was taking D-Manos, Flora, and um, vitamin C to boost my immune system, but also to flush out that the bad bacteria. Peed in the cup again the second time I went to the doctor, which was about a week later. They didn't give me any results as far as like me doing better or worse. I just know for me, I'm just gonna keep taking the D-Manos. I probably would just keep taking it um, as a preventative. I also make sure to take my B12 for energy um, and try to get all my supplements in as much as I can. Um, I'm taking the Ritual prenatals. I don't like them. Um, I mainly don't like them because when I take them, I feel like if I burp, I'm burping up fish oil. I take 
two of those, but then I also take additional omega-3 DHA. Um, but on top of taking all of that, I've been trying to increase my protein intake. I just noticed that I want a lot of protein, so I've been trying to eat more protein. Um, I eat a lot of eggs in the morning. Um, I eat like three to four eggs a day and like turkey sausage. Um, I try to get all my green vegetables in if I can. I've been craving pizza so much, but I craved pizza all the time before I was pregnant too. So I don't know if that's just like a, a pregnant thing or like a me thing, but I just love pizza. So I eat pizza probably three, four times a week. Not even gonna hold you. I also really like eating dishes with like chicken, rice, and vegetables. Um, so I love like, I'll be craving like Benihana, um, like a whole Benihana hibachi chicken meal with like the chicken and the soup and the veggies. Um, I had a po' boy today, it was divine. But everything sounds good. I don't really have cravings. It's more so just, I wanna eat and I wanna eat good, and I wanna eat a lot of it. When we were in New York, I was just like, let's eat all the foods. Like, I want some pizza, I want some Thai food, you know, I wanna get me a, a chopped cheese, so sad. I wanted to try the chopped cheese, the Aki way, with the mozzarella sticks on it and everything, like, I was gonna go ham on that. So next time I go back to New York, gotta get a chopped cheese. I've also noticed that I've been wanting, like, soul food, too, like, especially greens, which I've never been a greens, like, a collard greens girl, but I've been wanting greens. Meat, greens, macaroni and cheese and if I get it, I'm happy, I'm a happy girl. Not really heavy on the sweet stuff, like I noticed that during this entire pregnancy so far. If I do want sweets, I want bread, so like a donut. I think we are at the point now where I can find out what the gender of the baby is. You guys are gonna hate me. I'm not doing a gender reveal. I'm not gonna tell y'all what the baby is. I wanna keep it a surprise. Y'all can guess as much as y'all want, I don't care. I ain't telling. So you really don't know. I want to have something just for me. As an influencer, as, as somebody who shares my life on the internet, some things I just want private. And because most of this pregnancy won't be private, because I am sharing, because I am giving guys updates, because I am talking about the process, I feel like I'm sharing a lot. I remember years ago, I told myself I was not going to share my pregnancy. I was going to just pop up pregnant one day or pop up with a baby and leave it at that and not say anything. But I do feel a call to share. At least the parts that I feel like are helpful and will be helpful to somebody else. I'm not open to opinions. I'm not open to hearing what people want me to do, what I should do, what they want for me. And so for that reason, some things I wanna to keep to myself. I want some things to just be sacred for me and I feel like withholding information makes me feel more comfortable with sharing things. That's so weird. It's already uncomfortable for me to talk about my pregnancy online. It's just weird. I don't know why it's weird to me. Like I'm fine recording this, but when I get ready to post it, I get like anxiety and I'm like, I'm sharing a lot. I'm talking a lot. I'm sharing too much. I'm doing too much. So the gender will be sacred and it will be for me and my husband to know and nobody else. And that's that on it. And you can find me on it if you want to, I don't care. So that's all for this update, I believe. I think I covered everything. If not, um, let me know if I missed something. But I will be like doing some videos here and there of me like just talking about things. Just let me know what you guys wanna see and I will definitely get to it. Also be sure to stay tuned because I'm gonna be talking more about my Amazon drop on Instagram. So if you guys wanna be a part of the process of me creating my Amazon drop collection this time around, be sure to check that out on Instagram. And yeah, that's it. I don't think I have anything else to say so I'll talk to you guys in my next video. I'll see y'all later. Bye.